Hi guys, uh, I'm, for those of you that don't know, I'm Michael uh, and I'm the woodworker for MK Designs and I'm in my office today because the wind is just really whipping um, and it's supposed to get worse. <laughs> I haven't been able to get out in the shop much this week because uh, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday I was sick as a dog. I had some sort of upper respiratory thing, it was just weird. Um, and then yesterday, today is Thursday, uh, tomorrow and Saturday, it's supposed to be really windy. We're supposed to have gusts over 60 miles an hour today and at least 50 tomorrow. And I apologize. I'm swiveling back and forth in my chair because of old habits. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do is I originally wanted to do my deck cooler box build in one video, but, um, I think instead I'm going to cut it up into at least two, possibly three. It just depends on how long it takes me to do the next part that I need to get done. Um, so yeah, let me show you what we're, what we're working with. Okay, so this is where it's currently at as of today. I'm just going to pull it out here and show you real quick. The part that my hand's on right now, that's the part I'm going to be adding on today and it's going to be in this video. And uh, it's just a, like a 54 quart cooler, uh, igloo cooler from Sam's. It's one of the big ones. I don't remember exactly what size it is. There you can see where the drain's going to come out, and I've removed all the hardware. And yeah, I got a little bit of squeeze out, but it, I'm not worried about it. And open it up here and show you how lacking my cleaning skills are. There's some burn spots in there. I'm not sure where they came from, and I've got some sanding to do. And here's the wind. And this is calm. It's supposed to get a lot worse than this. So that's where we're at. And at least we will be at the end of this video. And the next video in this particular series, um, I'll be putting on the sides and the top and attaching the drain engine and all that and hopefully getting it finished. I even have this little bottle opener thing that we found a few years ago that I'm going to put on it. Um, so yeah, let, let's get to it. So this is where I'm at, and basically all I did was the top frame here and the bottom frame down here. I cut them, I cut them everything to size, including these inside pieces here and the legs, and all these cross pieces. You can see the top doesn't have any because that's where the cooler is actually going to sit down in it. These are actually going to support it, and what I did was I dry fit everything together to make sure everything was gonna go right. And then I glued, I started like on this corner and I glued this piece to here and this piece to here. And this is a really strong glue joint here. This one is obviously ingrained to long grain and not the strongest in the world. So what I did and to help with the aesthetic look that I'm going for, I ran four inch screws here and two and a half inch here, as you can see, the two and a half inch only go between these two boards, whereas the four inch goes all the way into this one. And that helps support it. And then I would glue on this support after I did all four corners. I glued on this support and then I did the same thing with the bottom. And with these, I just ran regular two and a half inch wood screws because I'm not going to be these are going to be covered, so the aesthetics isn't going to really matter much. I didn't think about that when I did the first one, and I put the screws in there, and the holes are now too big for these little screws, so that's what I had to go with. But I'll demonstrate how I did show how I did that on the next part, because what the next part is, after I got all this together, I decided, well, hey, you know, I think I want a shelf over here. <laughs> Plus, it allows me to get my drain out a little bit better than this setup does. So I cut these little strips and I've got them on here, glued and screwed. And I've cut out all my pieces. And I'll show you how we're gonna put that together. And that'll demonstrate how I did these. Okay, so the first thing I have to do, obviously, is I have to measure where I want my screws to go. So my small square there is set to three quarters of an inch. The big one is set to two and a half inches. And you'll see why in just a minute. The 
small one I can mark both edges and the top and then with the big one I can mark the bottom that way I don't have to continuously readjust my squares so I'm gonna get these marked up and then I'm going to grab my awl and I'm gonna punch a hole in the center so that the drill bit has something to grip into so it doesn't try to slip on me and whatnot um, I should go ahead and tell you guys, I don't think I've mentioned it already in the video, um, I actually started this build before I s decided I was going to start doing videos, so that's why I'm so far on so far on it already, and I wanted to include this one in it, and I thought it was going to just be a quick short video, but it's actually looking like it might be actually three episodes, so this is where we're at. Anyway, I do that, and I continue around all four corners. As you can see here, I'm trying to fi make sure I get everything lined up the way I need it. And I think I actually made a mistake here and wound up having to go back and fix it. So I'm going to clamp it and then I'm going to drill my pilot holes. So I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up here just so we're not sitting here forever watching me drill a bunch of holes now of course I'm making a mistake here and I don't know how many of you can actually notice right now what that is but if you guess that I didn't drill the countersink hole first you'd be absolutely right I should have done that first now it all worked out in the end but I should have done that first so what I'm using here is I'm using a half inch Forstner bit and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna drill the countersink hole first and then I'm going to go through and drill my pilot holes. So we're going to speed this part up. So now I can go and drill my pilot holes. And the way I'm doing this is I'm drilling for the four inch screws. So I'm drilling through the first two pieces first. And then I'll line up the second piece and the third piece and I'll drill through those two pieces. Now that part's not necessary, not, probably not necessary, but it just, it made me feel better to know that my wood wouldn't split. It just, I'd rather just drill the pilot hole, take the few extra minutes and do that. So one thing to the important note here is I'm actually numbering each corner. That way when I drill my pilot screw pilot holes, I know that which three pieces go to which corner and I, all my holes will line up when I go to put everything together. Now comes the glue up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line everything up, make sure I have everything situated the right way. And then I'm going to start with the piece that I have to glue the end grain. Again, I'm lining up by making sure I've got the right numbers. I believe this is number four. And I'm going to put a generous amount of glue on there. I'm sorry it's off camera. Again, I'm still learning camera angles. But the rest of it will be better. <laughs> Now on this piece, I'm going to put glue on both sides because part, one part of it's going into the end grain and the other part of it's going into the other piece. And I like to put glue on both surfaces and make sure I get it covered really well. I've had a few glue joints fail on me in the past and when I started doing it this way, that stopped. So this is what I do now. Okay, so the next step is to get it clamped so nothing moves, get everything square, and then put my screws in. These are the screws that I'm using. These are the 4-inch, and these are Timberlock screws. I got them from Home Depot. And the reason I'm using them is because they're incredibly strong screws, first of all. And secondly, they are black, <laughs> so they kind of give me the aesthetic look that I'm going for here. 
and I'll drive the, the two four inch screws in, then I'll drill my pilot holes for the two and a half inch screws and I'll drive those into the other two holes. Okay, so on this project, uh, to get rid of the excess glue, I'm just using a damp rag. It's what I use most of the time, actually, but occasionally I'll let it dry and use a paint scraper and just scrape it off. But in this case, I'm using a damp cloth, and it works really well. So again, I'm going to drill the pilot hole for the 2.5-inch screws, and I'm going to put them into these two holes, and then I'll flip it over, and I'll wipe off the excess glue from the rest of the corners, and then I'll repeat this for the other three corners and we're ready to start attaching. Okay, so here it is. This is the part that's gonna hold the shelf all completed and give me a little bit more extension down there for my drain. And you can see how I put it together, how the screws are all in. I wiped up as much of the glue as I could. So now we're gonna start attaching it. Here I'm just marking, got it in, in place to be able to mark for my glue line so I don't go over and I don't have too much squeeze out, too much to clean up, I should say. I'm just taking the time to make sure that everything's lined up before I, right where I want it before I get everything marked. Not sure what I was thinking here. I, I'm, I'm in the way of the camera, and I realize that now. Um, I think I was just getting too involved in it and forgot that the camera was going, but I'm just putting the glue on. I've already got it. I did uh, the glue on the piece off, off camera, and I'm just putting the glue on. Then I'm going to place it in and clamp it down and drive some wood screws in it, and that'll be that. Now, I'm sure some of you have noticed that everything doesn't quite line up quite right. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I went back and triple-checked my measurements after I noticed this. I didn't want to have to go back and rebuild the thing, so I just kind of went with it. And the measurements are actually coming out to within a sixteenth of an inch of each other. But the thing's a good quarter to half inch off. Now, I'm not real sure what happened, but... <laughs> it's off, and but I'm okay with it because it's all going to be covered up anyway. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop at today. Um, like I said, you know, I just I just haven't been able to get to it and get it finished. But when I finish it, I will be sure to film it, and I'll put another video up for this build series. Um, Next week, I've got a couple of things I need to get done. Um, hopefully, I can get those done. And I'll probably put that video up before I put the conclusion of this one. But uh, it should be in the next week or two that I have that up. Uh, so, yeah, until next time, happy creating. Sasha. Hi.